Okay, so in this video, what we're going to do is discuss where the kinetic energy formula in fundamental physics comes from, the K equals one half mv squared. And again, this is another bonus video of applications of Taylor series that may have come up in some of your courses already without knowing it. So first, let's just talk about kinetic energy. The typical kinetic energy equation we see in physics is one half mv squared, where m is the mass of an object and v is the velocity of an object. And k is the kinetic energy. We're going to ask ourselves, where does this actually come from? And one view into this is we can actually derive this through special relativity. Special relativity, of course, is about a little over 115 years old now. It's Einstein's theory. And one way that special relativity really kind of shook the physics world was actually saying that our mass is actually a function of how fast we might be moving. We could view this as our mass changes with respect to how fast we're moving. So if we were to write out an equation for our mass in terms of our speed in which we're walking, running, etc., it could be equal to our mass at rest. We'll define all these characters in a moment. Divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared. Again, v is our velocity divided by c squared. c squared, or c, I should say, is the speed of light. And m0 is our mass at rest. So when we're not moving. So again, we're thinking of basically our mass changes when we start moving around. And this is one way to kind of view it in special relativity in kind of a hand wavy fashion. But what I want to jump into without discussing a lot of the physics, uh, philosophical aspects of special relativity is that the way we think about kinetic energy, well, that's the difference between um, mc squared, the energy we have when we're moving, and the energy we have when we're at rest. So what this actually looks like for us, because Einstein gave us that beautiful E equals MC squared formula, is we're going to jump into that right away. So another way we can rewrite this kinetic energy is that K is equal to, well, using our energy formulas from Einstein, MC squared, where M, this is our mass, that's a function of velocity, times c squared versus, or subtracting off the mass when we're at rest, times c squared. So again, these energy formulas are really coming from e equals mc squared. So if we write out what we know, well, m in terms of the velocity, our mass as we move, we just had that formula before. So the kinetic energy actually looks like m zero c squared, our mass at rest, divide by that big square root, one minus v squared all over c squared. And from that, we're subtracting our mass, or sorry, our um, energy at rest. So again, what we have is energy moving minus energy at rest. And well, we have similar factors in both of these. We have this m0 c squared term in both of these. So let's just pull it out in front. So we have parentheses then, one over this square root, which I'm going to actually at this point rewrite that square root as a 1 minus v squared over c squared 
to the 1 half power. And that's minus 1 since we factored out the m not c squared. And let's just do one little extra step of algebra. I'd rather not have things in the denominator here. So this is m0 c squared, now times the quantity 1 minus v squared all over c squared to the negative 1 half power minus 1. And well, at this point, this is where we're going to invoke some Taylor series business. If we look at this term, the 1 minus v squared over c squared to the minus 1 half power, this looks a whole lot like a binomial series. So what we're going to do is actually investigate, take a quick break. What number are we up to now? 3. And look at what the first couple terms of that binomial series is. Except we're going to view this binomial series to make this easier. as a series for us of just 1 minus x to the minus 1 half power. And at the end, we can think of x is just equal to v squared all over c squared. This is really using our idea like a stencil, or our idea of stencils. So if we have that series, the 1 minus x raised to the minus 1 half power. You might remember that, well, for our binomial series, what we actually needed was a 1 plus some quantity. So we'll do a stencil that's 1 plus a negative x. We're still raising that to the minus 1 half power. And the reason we'll do that is, well, we only really care about the first couple terms of this binomial series. So if we wrote out what the first couple terms of this binomial series it would be, 1, actually let's back up because we haven't really done binomial series too much. So this is a uh, side calculation. If we remember we had 1 plus x raised to some power p, well, the first couple terms of this series just look like 1 plus p times x plus p times p minus 1 all over 2 factorial times x squared, and we could keep going on higher and higher. So let's just fill in those details with the series we have. So our 1 plus our stencil now raised to the minus 1 half power. If we just use that binomial series, well, this looks like we have a 1 plus p. p, in our case, is equal to minus 1 half. And that's times our x term, except x now, because of the stencil, is negative x. And then we have plus p, again, which is negative 1 half, times a p minus 1, which is now a minus 3 over 2, all over 2 factorial, times x squared. And again, x here is our minus x from our stencil. And of course, there's higher terms than this. So let's see what we have as the first couple terms. It looks like we have a 1 plus an x over 2. And then we have plus a 3 over 8 x squared. So for our 1 minus x to the minus 1 half term, this is exactly what we have. So let's go back and use this in our previous kinetic energy equation. And again, we let x equal v squared over c squared 
So we're just going to have to substitute that into our series. So just to remind ourselves, we had k is equal to m naught c squared times that binomial series looking term, the 1 minus v squared over c squared, all raised to the minus 1 half power that we just looked at the expansion in a binomial series, all minus 1. So now what we're going to do is just substitute the first couple terms of that binomial series in for that 1 minus v squared over c squared to the one half, negative 1 half power. So when we go ahead and do that, Everything in red is going to, or everything in the red parentheses are going to come from that binomial series. We have that, that's a 1 plus a 1 half v squared over c squared. Let's just make those blue for consistency. Plus 3 eighths times the quantity squared of v squared all over c squared. And then there's higher terms that we just didn't lay out in our binomial series. Okay. But again, everything in red is just coming from our binomial series expansion using the Taylor series. We have to subtract 1 from that, coming from that 1 over here, and that ends the square brackets. So if we look at what's going to cancel here, well, we have the big thing in red minus the 1. Those 1s are going to cancel off. So what the kinetic energy looks like is m naught c squared all times the quantity 1 half v squared over c squared plus 3 eighths v to the fourth all over c to the fourth plus many other terms of a binomial series. And finally, let's just redistribute that m naught c squared back in. So we have k is equal to, well, the c squareds are going to cancel out, and the c squareds going to cancel out a c squared out of the c to the fourth. So let's check out what we have. We have this is one half m naught c squared, or sorry, v squared, plus three eighths m naught times v to the fourth. all over c squared. And then again, there are a bunch of other terms as well beyond that. And this is what the kinetic energy looks like. Except for us in our considerations in physics, what we typically think about are the following. If we're generally moving as humans, people on Earth, even planets going through space, stars going through space, we assume that V is typically a whole lot smaller than the speed of light. So if this is true, meaning that we are moving a lot, lot slower than the speed of light, you could almost think of this quantity, V squared over C, or for that matter, V to the fourth over C squared, that thing is very close to zero. And in fact, what we do is say, generally, we're not moving anywhere near the speed of light. So that quantity v to the fourth over c squared is basically zero. So we get rid of this term through an approximation saying that, hey, that thing is small enough. So the physics equation you see for kinetic energy in fundamental physics or foundational physics just turns out to be one half m0 v squared. And that's the standard kinetic energy equation that we're familiar with from our foundational physics classes. The only last thing to tidy up is, well, that, um, 
that mass at rest, we generally don't think of masses changing too much with respect to velocity. Again, because we're moving pretty slow compared to the speed of light. So for us in our considerations, the second assumption we make is m naught is very close, you know what, to our actual mass. But again, you could even get rid of this second assumption because m naught is our just resting mass. I hope this was a little bit helpful to see where this kinetic energy equation comes from, even coming from special relativity, where we start seeing more philosophically difficult to grasp kind of physical topics at hand.